And now, The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder, live from the Moon Tower Comedy Festival in Austin, Texas. So, yeah. Hey, Austin, Texas, how are you? Howdy! Welcome to The Bonfire. I can't sit too much, I ate too much barbecue, I'll fucking pass out. How's it going? Yeah, you got the itis. You and your devil meat. Yeah, it is the bonfire. We are live from Moon Tower Festival in Austin, Texas. Give yourselves a fucking round of applause for coming out here. Holy shit. Look at Phil and Crystal wear their cowboy hats, too. We look awesome or like jerk offs. Like jerk offs. It's like one of the little kids in a rodeo, and his parents are like, I'll buy the hat, just support him. <laughs> it's a fucking idiot. At the end of the show, Dan's going to ride a sheep. Yeah. I've always wanted to do that. Can we do Mutton that? Busting. Next, can we do that next year? Just mutton bust right on stage? Oh, dude, we'll run out of barn. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'll break a clavicle. Dan, how much are you enjoying this festival this year? So this far? is the best. Coming to Austin, Texas is the best. Powerful weed and very weird people. It's a perfect mix. <laughs> don't do the barbecue so early in the day. No. It hits like a motherfucker. It's like a, it just, you like have a hammer in your stomach all day. We both we synchronized our poops on the road. I know. And you know how much I hate shitting after a shower. Yeah. I hate it so much. You, obviously, if you're a listener, you know Jay goes into great detail about wiping his asshole. <laughs> Hell, if you've ever heard Jay talk, you know he goes into great detail. But, Dan, you uh, turned my life around not too long ago. Well, Jay, I think my... that's the Lord and Savior, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> if I may. I'm simply just a hand that guides. <laughs> I mean, you really... Uh, I've been standing up, then wiping my entire life. It's... That's... I mean... It's like, I get, I get putting, the, it's like putting food in your backpack. It might not always go bad, but when it does, it's going to fuck a lot of shit up. Yeah, it's like closing the sandwich too early. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you ever stood up and wiped. Clap if you stand up and wipe. Don't be ashamed. We're all family here. That's a, that's a loud clap. A couple like of dudes. That guy, clap, dudes. that guy clapped like he's the father of standing up for white things. I'm right here. Yeah. That's my son. It's a fine way to clean yourself. It's a gentleman's way. I, it didn't, I stood up. I turned around. I looked at my work. Because you, know, you fucked yourself. <laughs> I, it was ta yeah. And then I would go, yeah, full tang on myself. You would look in the mirror and go, look at you, kid. But now that. I do the th You know what's hilarious? And it made me think back to how many comedians have jokes about taking a shit. A lot. And when, they, and when they talk about wiping, they just do like an ass cheek lift. And I'm always like, what are they, bitches? <laughs> or did you think, like, is that all blocking for stage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I guess I'm going to get out of frame by showing an actual wipe where you do a couple of room paces first. Did you, like, go in on the front, like, all the way in like that? What? No. Oh. Why? Oh, well, you stood up, you stood up and wiped like that. Yeah, one... Uh, so you stand up, lock up, and then wipe. One hand opens cheek, other forearm opens other cheek, and then hand... It's like you're feeding a fucking alligator. You're like, there we go. Just get the oh, yeah, foot yeah, right yeah. there. You slap that pink tongue. Yeah. Start tempting myself. Ah? Ah? <laughs> ah? Hey, Christine, come in here. I'm going to put my head in it. <laughs> Those are always the funniest videos of motherfuckers getting bit by crocodiles. Because they're always so, like, aggressively shitty to the animal. What's up? What's up, they bitch? It? Yeah, I own this motherfucker. Oh, you yeah. green pussy. What's, What's up, up, jerk off? You won't even bite me, you puss. All these kids are watching. What you gonna do about it? And they <laughs> grabs their arm and rolls. And like, ah! <laughs> Guess you guys aren't as mean as me. We, uh, we, uh, we never do any Austin things when we're here, though, besides barbecue. We didn't go <laughs> it's the laziest. We don't go look at the... There's the bat cave. The bats come out? No, it's just a bridge. Okay, the bat bridge. How lame would Batman be if it was just he was lived under a bridge? <laughs> yeah. Just Batman booting up heroin. <laughs> I am the Dark Knight, I pass out. I need a long needle to get through all this robber. Where's my cans? <laughs> I'm collecting them. <laughs> Clean needles only. <laughs> That's going to Lewis as Batman. <laughs> I get methadone, sell that, and then buy junk. He did have a Bruce Wayne childhood, now that I think about it. Luce Gomez? Yeah. Totally. 
Uh, we have such a fucking awesome, weird show lined up for you guys. So thank you very much for coming out. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. For One more sure. time for Murkface Andy warming up the crowd, huh? Uh, he got thanks. fucking hammered last night. Um, so uh, great news about the show is that uh, joining us today, uh, as last year, we have, of course, Murkface, uh, Jacob, Talk is here in the house. Jacob, Christine. stick your head around the banner right there. Look at his little Huck Finn hat he bought. He's our, he's our little Huckleberry Finn. Engine Joe's coming over soon. Um, of course, Christine's here floating around somewhere. And, uh, okay, I don't give a shit. I, uh, I mean, of course, but... Uh, and that, uh, working the fucking ones and twos, uh, the heartbeat. Of the bonfire joining us this year is DJ Lou Witzke. Smash, smash, smash. Yeah, yeah. The hoes are laughing. Yep. Yes, 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 yes. I'll have what she's having. DJ Lou. Yeah. He got hammered and he got hammered. Andy, this Mark is not Face. a good way to do a live show. Murphy right. started confessing to uh, fucking war crimes last night. <laughs> I said the best way to describe Merc Face's drunk last night was when Ron Burgundy is on the downslope <laughs> and he's got the beard and he goes, Brick, my sweet Brick. There's an actual statement Andy made to me last night. I Shut started saying up, something. Shit, come on, Shut dude. Up, stop. I started saying something. He went, Yeah, from. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's me whenever I don't fully hear a sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, uh, yeah. So, what, wait, one more time. Uh, Come again. Yeah, he got uh, blitzed last night, and then you know, and then Lou turns to a little stew. But that's the bonfire. That's what's supposed to happen. Yeah, I uh, Austin's a fun drinking city. You guys are a good bunch of booze bags. Yeah, <laughs> you're sober though. Yeah, but that's why Sixth Street's fun at 2 in the morning, just to watch people collapse. <laughs> Asking you for help, mister. Yeah. Please. I, I was kind of lurking last night. I was just like watching, like, mm, look at you fall down. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed sober. I'm going to go to bed sober. I'm going to wake up clear-minded. I did the official, like, wake up in the middle of the night and drink a gallon of water with that. <sighs> 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 And then the bottle folds in, and then it comes back up. I, I was talking to someone earlier in the week, and I realized I used to drink so much more Pedialyte when I was an alcoholic. <laughs> what? I found out about it. And sure to yeah. keep your vitamins up? Dude, I found out about it in a Pantera documentary, and they were like, we drink... We drink Pedialyte, and I was like, "What's more rock and roll than being a day waiter and drinking Pedialyte?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, if you're fucking taking your daily fucking cues from Pantera's past, it was uh, there behind the music too. It wasn't even like a great story. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was good enough that I got info out of it. <laughs> but then I just started buying so much Pedialyte that I'm pretty sure the drugstore by me thought I had the sickest baby. <laughs> <laughs> like I was giving my, like I had Munchausen syndrome and I'm just making my baby sick. He needs more Pedialyte. But really, I'm like, I'm just ripping fucking rail whiskey. I'll tell you uh, what I did as far as the crushing water, being very thirsty recently. Uh, for the first time since, I believe, high school, I drank out of a water fountain. All right. That's, that's a real, that's the fanciest sentence you've ever had in your life. I haven't drank out of a water fountain since I was in high school. Well, how many opportunities do you have to drink out of a water fountain? All day, every day, bro. <laughs> what, are you, what are you, working out the Y? Yeah. <laughs> I go, hey, man, the physique's looking righteous. <laughs> it's impossible to get full of water. It's impossible to quench your thirst in a water fountain. Not if you don't fucking make out with that water fountain. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, if you go, if you're ready to touch your lips to that yeah. thing... A fucking bum hand petri dish. Put on, yeah. Oh, hands. There's more than that. <laughs> They're plugging it up with their dicks so it shoots into their mouth harder. <laughs> why would Lou just have the sound effect for that? That's and, why he's a fucking genius. But that's also a psychological study that when he was getting ready for this trip, he's like, I should throw in piss noise. <laughs> yes, if history serves, 
I'm probably going to need some piss noises. These little piggies. We're going to go to a gun range tomorrow, so that could end up in tragedy. No, what are you talking about? I don't know. There's Her a bunch- face and a gun has a flashback? Jacob, all the shit we give Jacob when we Jacob hand him a goes, gun then? Jacob goes, ah, hey guys, <laughs> he just turns around. <laughs> Hey, you know how you thought it was funny to make fun of me all the time? Uh, he My guys, nephew heard an episode. He doesn't respect me. <laughs> Have you guys ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? <laughs> hey, you want to you wanna see what the afterlife is like? <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to Jimi Hendrix for me, faggot. I'm about to Swayze your bitch ass. <laughs> <laughs> if we got killed by Jacob, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> he'd live in the blood for a couple days, just make. Then he write it. Yeah, then he write a book called "Putting Out the Fire." <laughs> <laughs> from ha- he writes it from jail. Yeah, <laughs> I started as a man and was turned into a monster. Words hurt, and they can change you. It's hard to do kip ups in a seven by nine cell. But... <laughs> kip up. Jacob is, uh, give Jacob a round of applause, Max. We, we don't get in front of a live audience too much, and Jacob does so much for the show. Does every, did everybody get the bonfire things? <laughs> They're all black now. Can we not talk about it because of legal issues? I mean, we say so much worse things. Do it we can't say? be happening the problem. But they, uh, this is, look, it goes, it's very on brand of me, I guess, particularly. He's yeah, the were, bad boy of the bonfire. I was saying, like, they go, give us some funny fake crimes for the one poster. And all three of mine, Comedy Central came back and said, you can't legally say you've done any of those things. Do you understand that Dan was three for three. His first three immediately approved. I had to do three rewrites, and they still put the wrong one on. I was like, I'm going to do low-level weak shit. And then Jay's like, I got it. And then we show up today and they're like, we have to black out all <laughs> Comedy Central will legally not allow you to pass those out to people. Can we have people guess what was blacked out? Sure. Crimes. The crimes, the three crimes. Raise your hand if you have a guess. Anybody have a guess? If you know Big Jay Okerson. No what are the three? Fuck. Where? There's one in the back. Great. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, We're slightly uh, more I, clever than that. I don't that guy's going to get profiled for the rest of the night. <laughs> That's Troy Ray. Oh, no, no, that's, that's more on brand. Warmer, but no. no. Kenny Diddling. I mean, also, you make it sound like it's a playground that happens at. Like, <laughs> he's going to yeah, try to. sounds like a birthday party place. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's going to try to get a small bank loan to open it. <laughs> Kenny Diddling. Like, you know what the title infers, right? Yeah. He's like, yeah, it'll be. Hear, hear me out. It's got candy by the pound. Uh, yeah. <laughs> live characters. The first ever child sauna. A decent exposure in a public pool. I mean, you can look at the blacked out part and see there's not enough room for all those words. <laughs> How much do you think is redacted in this? <laughs> Jay grew up a lonely child. <laughs> Murder two by reasons of insanity. All right, we'll just a couple more guests. All right. Animal buggery. Ah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say that's correct. That's a win. That's a win. Good job, Phil. Yeah. It was bestiality. Bestiality. It's right there in front of you guys the whole time. You didn't even see it. It was right under your nose. Could have been a lamb fucker this whole time. That's what we do next year. Dan rides it, and I fuck it. <laughs> Welcome to the bonfire. <laughs> Austin style. <laughs> with sh- Something with shit. No. How dare you. After all the cleanliness he puts into it, you think you'd leave a little behind for fun? No way. All right, one last one guest. Stealing fingerless gloves. Stealing fingerless gloves. I should have no, put that. No, but friend points for that one. I should have. I should have put that. The other two were corruption of minors. Fuck yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Is that your thing? What guy in the audience lost it like I just said his fucking hometown? Was it a guy with just a mustache who said that? I go, corruption of minors. He goes, ooh, ooh, that's what I do all day. Yeah. I've been corrupting minors since I turned 19. Can my friend come to your house to do coke too? She's 14. Yeah. Bring them all. Oh, I bet you got a carpeted basement. <laughs> and then. was a tube TV. Yeah. And then the last one was prostitution. 
and Comedy Central said, we can't publicly say that we've done those things. I guess they didn't feel you would find it to be a joke. They were like, it's a little on the nose, if I'm being honest. Yeah, bestiality? Do they think that's what they promote? Comedy, again, Comedy Central. Fuck a sheep. I've watched a lot of it, but I, not like sexually. In what veterinary way? <laughs> For the animal studies? Yes, the animal studies. I no, I, I watched the. Do you know, the, we, did we ever find the one on the show? The favorite where they give the girl a lead blanket and a helmet, and they bring a horse in, and she goes. Well, like an X-ray when they put the lead blanket. Yes. I swear to God, for her back and a helmet, she goes, why do I need these? They're like, nah, you know, in case. And then the horse comes up behind her and jumps up, clubs her on the helmet, clubs her on the back of the lead vest, and then just, by the way, impressively. <laughs> no, because they don't have, like, thumbs where they can, like, you know, you look for the hole, little, you give yourself a thumb start, and then you can just, this guy, he just lines it up. You can see his horse eyes looking up, like, what? You see and his then, horse distance? Is, uh, yeah, you see his horse thinking. Like, this I? feels uh, three feet to the left. Yeah, he goes, two clicks. Two clicks, biscuit. <laughs> He's like, here, am I there? Am I lined up? They're like, yeah. Could you be a horse spotter? There's horse whispers and horse spotters. <laughs> biscuit, two clicks left. <laughs> and then, yeah, he, like, he just lines up and goes in hard, and the girl's first noise is, ooh. So you can't jerk off to that. She's fucking a horse. Look, no, she agreed to fuck the horse. I mean, she put the helmet on. <laughs> that's, that's her strap. You jump, the, you jump in the cage, you gotta fight, man. Her strap it up. I hate to get all Brazilian on you. Do you think she put in a mouthpiece, too? She's like, hey, go get the horse. <laughs> she vaselined her eyebrows. Goes, all right, you know what? Uh, uh, start slapping up her thighs. <laughs> all right, go get him. Do it for God, do it for yourself. Who are we doing today? Who are we doing today? Running with the devil? Okay, bring him. Yeah. I just give him like fucking racehorse names. Yeah. Who am I fucking today? Running with the devil? Bowser and Thad. Dances with greatness. Is it time for our guest? Uh, <laughs> Jacob, we gave you a piece of paper that says the word break. This is why we try to do professional stuff and it never works. When people are like, why are you guys just potheads that just don't plan? It's like, because when we do try to plan, it shits itself. We made loose leaf paper signs for just this thing. Oh, break time? Cool. I'll definitely tell you, if this radio show was a lemonade stand, it would just be us with other lemonade and cups. <laughs> yeah, like certain kids made their lemonade. Oh, you mean like just be some country time? Yeah, be country time in a big picture, and I'd be like, you want a cup? Yeah, pull the tab off. Yeah, here's a big, give me a buck. <laughs> Sorry, we're at ice, too. It's warm lemonade on a hot day. And it's super sour. <laughs> lemonade has never once in my life quenched my thirst. Are you thinking of a time yeah. that you did? I don't think it has either. You can't just fucking rock lemonade like... <laughs> I do that big drink. Hunter, can you imagine 127 hours when he just escaped with his arm and the hikers found him? He's like, oh, thank you. He just grabs a canteen. <laughs> lemonade? Warm lemonade? Ah! Put me I under just a... cut my own arm off. Put me under another rock. <laughs> um, all right, let's take our first fucking break, and we'll come right back, everybody. Live from Austin, Texas, the Moon Tower. Comedy <laughs> Festival. It's the bonfire. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. And now, back to the bonfire. You killed the mics. <laughs> we gotta have They're our, editing us at our own show. Oh, there it we is. gotta get our, re, our rejoin music. Which oh. is gonna be today, songs that I told Dan about. <laughs> yeah. If you listen to this show, you know that in the past year, Jay's turned me on to a lot of bands. Uh, mostly Yacht Rock. It's funny to say turned you on to bands like House of Pain. <laughs> like, you've heard of them. I've heard of them, but I never went deep. Well, there are a lot of like deep House of Pain fans here. Clap if you're at, like a big House of Pain fan. <laughs> in, this that white, my point. in this white town, I'm I'm appalled at everybody here. <laughs> but Jay, everybody knows Jump Around. Then everyone should have clapped for House. Oh, you're saying deep cuts? Yeah, more than more than Jump Around. Clap if you know more than Jump Around from House of Pain. 
even that guy only meant he knew how to jump around. I was hoping it was the corruption of minors. Yeah. He's like, that's what I play when I let them know they're locked in the basement. Oh. Jump around covers up the streams of minors. Ready to go? On vinyl. I am ready to go, everybody. Uh, it's the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Series XM95. Is that a rejoin music? And now, back to the Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder, live from the Moon Tower Comedy Festival in Austin, Texas. If I start smoking, I can get there. If I start smoking again? Yeah. This is the nicotine song. Everybody, we are back. It's the Bonfire. Coming to the radio series at 95 again. Live, Austin, Texas, Moon Tower Comedy Festival. Full crowd. Sold out crowd at Antones. So we said we got a packed show for you guys. Some fun shit we're going to be doing. Uh, we have some, some world exclusive shit. Uh, but we have right now joining us a guest. Dan, you want to intro our guest? Absolutely. A uh, very special guest. One of the greats. Uh, you know him. You love him. Please welcome Mr. Colin Quinn, everybody. Yeah. 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 Come over the couch. Coming in aggressive. Yeah. yeah. That's that old MTV attitude. Yeah. <laughs> That's a remote control, Colin Quinn, right there. <laughs> You're not getting tough crowd, Colin Quinn. You ain't remote control, Colin Quinn. Wow. Hey, Colin. Wow, guys. How dumb do we look in our hats? Oh, my God. It's, uh, you know what I mean? If you say anything negative, you don't mean it. Uh, I don't. You look, you look like uh, Led Zeppelin's manager. <laughs> <laughs> if you manage like Kenny Chesney or somebody. <laughs> You're not supposed to wear hats at Antones, by the way. See, this is why you need an old guy like me. This place is legendary. Not for country. It's like outlaw country. They don't wear fucking hats. Towns Van Zandt. They wouldn't be quite... Towns Van... What? Who? Exactly. But wait, I'm sorry. Oh, they made it. Oh, oh, everyone that didn't know House of Pain, all of a sudden he names one and you lose your shit. They're I see pissed. how it is. They're pissed. You fair weather Good. asshole. They're not fair weather. It's their town. Do you want to go towns who? At fucking Tantones? Yeah, jerk off. Oh, uh, don't be do that. You, know, you're, Jay. you guys turn Jay heel. <laughs> Outlaw country like my hat. Is this, I like the Colin bullied you out of your this, hat. Is this a oh, mirror? Yeah. Is this a mirror? Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought... <laughs> There's a person there. There was a mirror. Most, most of our fans look J exactly joke. like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've got a demo. <laughs> it's J and then a couple non-Js. There's so many fans. That's what we call the ladies, the non-Js. <laughs> <laughs> Those are our lady fans. Sometimes, sometimes I'll put people like fans on like guest list for stuff. Yeah. And uh, I'll forget to put them on the guest list, but they always get in because they go, yeah, I just said at the front door that I was like a friend of yours, and they were like, yeah, probably. <laughs> 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 I don't know if that's a good thing. No, it's, a, it's an awful thing, probably. <laughs> Dan looks like the guest star singer on like an old episode of Friday Night Lights. <laughs> I would love oh, to. Oh, come that. on, I was trying. It wasn't good. I, I knew thought it was, it was great. I, I knew it halfway through, but I still want to. I'm it. shutting down the gyro shop to go to a high school football game. <laughs> My son just moved in, and he's the backup quarterback. <laughs> he just moved in with me. I <laughs> You guys saved that one for me, thank you. Yeah, no problem. It's teamwork in the bonfire. Yeah. We might be wearing cowboy hats, but we're not assholes. <laughs> Is that a wrong thing to say, too? <laughs> I don't know my Texas manners. When you died on that Van Zant thing is where they lost you. Like, you're like, we're not assholes. Yeah. Like, yeah, you are sort of an asshole. I'm sorry. I'm learn the lay of the land, dick face. <laughs> I have to go learn every market's Woo! music. Yeah. This is the hipster town of... Texas. This is probably the first hipster. Why you turn on him for that, huh? No, What's it's wrong the with first. That? They invented hipster here. Okay. Did they? Yeah, it's the first hipster place. You're from Brooklyn, New York. Yes. <laughs> Who is more hipster, Brooklyn or Austin? Well, they were first. I, I mean, they were. But they were here in the. They were hipster when it was uh, in the early '80s, mid '80s. You know what I mean? What's more dangerous to be hipster, Brooklyn or Texas? Oh my probably God. Texas, because you know they're kind of surround. You know what I mean? Like they're like. The Prius in the middle of a NASCAR rally. <laughs> oh, can we be frank? Yeah. So they're like frontiersmen, but for hipsters? They come back to Brooklyn? <laughs> no, like, I'm just saying Good that. Good news, guys. We just gentrified Austin. But they invented hipsterism by accident because the other rest of the country was hipster because nerds became like... A nerd is sort of like a hipster that's a little shyer, you know, but this was like the homeless people, like the first... Like kind of white, kind of tattooed street people, and then it became a thing. So it actually started here as 
homelessness and became hipster. But as far as more dangerous... I think that went from a compliment to I know to it's not true, but, you know, it was a good theory. Come on. As far as dangerous, though, here you're surrounded by, like, you know, conservative uh, right. white dudes. In Brooklyn, you're surrounded by black dudes on Kawasaki ninjas and shit. Like, <laughs> it's much more point, scary. Do you think good only point. the Rough Riders live in Brooklyn? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just ATVs and motorcycles. Jay makes a good point. There's two black neighborhoods left in Brooklyn, and there's a lot of uh, rough riders in those two. <laughs> yeah. The only thing left in Brooklyn that's black is all the projects surrounding all the uh, white brownstones. Now. Yeah, all, and have all you, the new skyscrapers. Have you ever seen yeah. an all black uh, like bike or motorcycle thing go through a, a like an avenue of New York City? Sure. And, the, oh, and no one does a goddamn <laughs> thing. Everyone, all you just look is all the cars of white people in their cars just going like. Just shaking their heads like it's no, no one gets out and goes like what the fuck? And no one complains. Right. They're just like, like what the fuck? This sucks. Yeah. Oh, this... what are you? You're acting like when a bunch of motorcycle white bikers people like with their problem. You know what I mean? No one is afraid of that. Oh, That's white bikers? True. You that. know what? That really hurts coming from the one. You're like the biker comedian, and you. No one should be afraid of me. <laughs> no, but you represent all the badass bikers. Please don't even say that again. I don't even know how to turn a motorcycle on. True That's story. Not the point. Don't say that. Don't say that out loud. You'll lose your key demo. Jesus Christ. I know it's got something to do where you go like... <laughs> oh, no. That makes... Even I'm... I'm, I'm, Jay, I'm I can't believe it myself. It's breaking my heart. Me too. It's like finding out that John Wayne didn't know how to shoot a gun. That's right. I've never... You know what? Maybe, maybe it's because I, I think art imitates... Or uh, life imitates art because... <laughs> Uh, I always feel if you get in trouble with the bikers, just put on like the waiter shoes and do the fucking tequila dance like Pee Wee. <laughs> <laughs> like that movie just struck me where I was like, oh, you can get them on your side. I feel like I can get white bikers on my side. I don't know. They are on your side. That's the whole point. Right. right. That's why I'm not afraid of them, maybe. But now you should be. Look, you're thugs not afraid of a thug. You know what I mean? There goes that. There's thugs. That. He's a guy with a you know. He was in the rows walking down the street. He didn't cross the street. He just walks right past and does this shit, or they kill each other. <laughs> I hope a biker confronts you about not being able to start a motorcycle. Yeah. I he hope goes, you hey, really... Jay, you broke my heart, man. You could have yeah. headlined Sturgis for like the next 11 years. <laughs> I He's going to have a residency at Sturgis? <laughs> I, did, I did a residency nice. at Sturgis. Oh, you did? I swear on my life, I performed every night in this one little Ladies place. and gentlemen, He's back. from April He's back. to July. Ten-seat room in the Dust Bowl during the Sturgis Festival. <laughs> oh, I love it. What's up, brothers? I went, what a fucking festival, huh? I, I swear to you, that guy's shirt. it was ten people. So things would happen while I was... Fucking triumph, you faggot. While I was on stage, a guy one time, one of the shows, it's a 10-seat room. A guy kicked in the door, and he goes, Frank, I'm going to punch you in the nuts, motherfucker. Like, the loudest thing in the room. Oh, dude, what a, what a great fucking heckle. <laughs> hey, Frank, you son of a bitch. I, all you could do at that point is be like, what did he do? He's like, oh, sorry. Fuck a motherfucker left me out there door in Kid Rock. <laughs> Uh, it was during photograph. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of them cry songs. He called me gay for like and didn't laugh. Frank. <laughs> I needed your support. <laughs> I don't do Cheryl Crow music. <laughs> so hipster, the hipster battle goes to Austin because it originated it? Yeah, I think it did. I could be wrong. You know, I say things whether they're true or not. It seems true to me. <laughs> I think, Call that the I think I'm right about Seattle. that. Yeah. I'm right about the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Well, look, I'm mad at that. Pacific Northwest hipster. That's super crunchy. Yeah. Because they have... The, Portland, the, really. Well, you know why? Because the, when you get to the Seattle and Portland, though, the hipster actually does a lot of the things that the look implies. Like, they wear flannel but and chop wood. You know what I mean? They don't wear flannel and do, like, fucking poetry. Like, they... If anyone's been to Seattle recently, uh, a lot of them are living under the highway. What? That's new. What happened? They're living under the highways. Go to Seattle now. There's a shit ton of people living under the highways in, like, camps. Why, they hear Dave Grohl did that? <laughs> no. You sound like one of their dads criticizing them. Yeah. Why did Dave Grohl do it? Get a job, you piece of shit. I'm addicted to heroin, Dad. <laughs> Go under the bridge then. <laughs> Stop booting Woody, you Anthony Kiedis. Get out of here. Red Hot Chili Pepper. This is the saddest sitcom I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm addicted you know to heroin, Dad. We're spitballing it right now. It's, a, it's more of a This Is Us kind of feel. <laughs> I see it as an IFC thing, maybe. Yeah. Comedy, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I don't even know if I find this town to be. I, well, I'm only here for the festival, so it never seems to be that hipstery, quite oh. honestly. But the, but the actual bars and the music, I guess, is what. What's the saying. hipster part? No, of you can't call it. What's that? East Side. That's. Uh, oh, we're all in agreement, Austin. East Side. But they kind of yeah. But they were like the hip town before there was hipster. Like this, the music scene was like you know they don't even. The music scene's part. always been legendary here. Right. Do, do you think the hipsters gravitated towards that? Yeah. Do they gentrify here? Like, do white nerds go, I don't give a shit if there's a Jamaican drug den next to me. I'm paying 800 bucks a month. Or do they... There's no Jamaicans in Austin, Jay. There's... One. <laughs> there's got to be one. Do they His move? name's Trevor. It's always Trevor. You know, Leslie. All the guys keep running at me with their mustaches. <laughs> I feel real confused. Why are you riding a unicycle? Between the white boys with guns and the one with the mustaches. Why? <laughs> do, they, do they kick ranchers off their land? Do they gentrify ranches? <laughs> so, like, this is my ranch now. <laughs> I'm, gonna turn I'm taking a, this old barn and I'm turning it into an art space. <laughs> with an Argentinian coffee like, shop. This cattle ranch has been in my family back to 1865. <laughs> well, now it's mine. <laughs> Rain on the scarecrow, blood on the plow. <laughs> You're hurting animals. <laughs> I'm going to set your pigs free. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you you are one of the most knowledgeable people I know, Colin. You read a lot. That's, yes. That's my nice, dumb way of saying you're smart. Bill O'Reilly just got a shit ton of money. He did? Yeah. They said the payout's going to be something like uh, $22 million Woo! Wow. First year? That means he could harass uh, all the same amount of chicks and still... Come out on top? Get like $11 million to his own himself. Yeah, he had to pay like $15 million? Yeah. He well, paid. He paid. I think it was thirteen million. He paid to women to keep it. I uh, think we're all going to try to see how this relates to me reading a lot because I certainly <laughs> don't understand where this. You're a numbers guy. In between reading, you harass chicks. <laughs> <laughs> you read a lot of harassment <laughs> techniques. You read a lot. Have you heard about this new novel with Bill O'Reilly? Uh, <laughs> what, like, Google <laughs> fucking headlines. There's a new tell-all novel out. I don't know if you proved it. It was a shitty oh, segment. <laughs> well, he is an author. Does he write all the books? <laughs> it's called, yeah, Killing, well, killing yeah, My yeah. Career. Yes. Colin, you love music. What do you think of the new Marvel Iron Fist? <laughs> <laughs> you fancy yourself oh, a bit of a music... Uh... I was, and I was just, Colin, you're I was literally Brooke. sitting there thinking Dan was like a genius for coming up with that kick the ranches off my lamb bit. Yeah, yeah, And then he came up with that, and I was like, oh, Jesus he, like, Christ. He was lightning in a bottle. It brought him right back down to earth. You know what I'm saying? Colin, you're from New York. What do you think of Aaron Hernandez hanging himself? <laughs> <laughs> I really suck sometimes. <laughs> do you think he was just trying to masturbate and choke himself? He would keep saying this. He keeps saying this is, I think, legitimately Big J's theory. Nobody a, ever hangs themselves in 2017. It's not that's. There's so many other ways to kill yourself. If you died by hanging, you were trying to jerk off. But he, he's in prison. There's not a lot of other ways to kill yourself in jail, right? That's true. But there's also no better way to jerk off in jail. That's a good point yeah, too. But, I mean, yeah. You, if you want to spice it up in solitary. <laughs> You know, 17 uh, tips to drive him crazy when he's locked up. <laughs> you want to zhuzh up your time? <laughs> Cut off your air supply and bust in the... <laughs> <laughs> but don't marinate in it because you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> don't keep it in the oven too long. <laughs> 25 million. For, for getting fired. That's, that's what right. happened? But sort of let go. We're back to this? Yeah. Well, we really want the capitalism effect that you're a reader. <laughs> yeah. I set it up so great, why not take advantage? If I, was a, if I was a lawyer, then I can understand. You're like, okay, you're a lawyer. What do you think? It's 25 million. <laughs> I should have seen it. I should I have this, I'll save you the trouble of going any further. I have the same fucking opinion as everybody in this goddamn crowd right now. So, yeah, fucking 25 million. That's it. <laughs> Everyone I mean, usually thinks, like, I'd take that to get fired. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to have a CNN show where I just bring up points like that. I go, pretty crazy, right? 
The Chris <laughs> Farley show of CNN. Yeah. How about all the women that get harassed and then don't, and everybody else gets paid, and now it's too late to jump on the bandwagon? That's yeah. gonna be the worst feeling, right? Yeah, it's like you're in one of Fucking those. Fucking eight million. One of them got eight million for a phone call. <laughs> for a phone call. Do you, did you get bad vaginal meths or mesothelioma? Did Bill O'Reilly touch your sniz? Hi, I'm Jane Fitzgerald of Fitzgerald and Fitzgerald. Uh, we can get you results on any Bill O'Reilly case. <laughs> Slip and fall. Did Bill O'Reilly's dick pics give you mesothelioma? <laughs> Hit and run. Did you get loofed by Bill O'Reilly? <laughs> what if he put out a brand of loofahs? Oh, it'd be great. Yeah. This is like a real fuck you to everyone that hates him. His requests were like really like off the wall, right? But I said this before, but he really... The, I, think Bill, I think Bill O'Reilly's thing was he, he comes into it like... He jumps that part of normal insecurity that is like, before I start getting filthy with this chick, let me feel out if she digs me a little bit. And he jumps to like, this chick already digs me. Hey, can I put my hand in you? But how about the fact that he Who so says, can I put my hand in you, though? How about I'm sorry, can I loofah you? Tomato, tomato, Dan. No, he said he went to, no, he said he went to loofah up his ass. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Good for Bill. Really? What about this? <laughs> really breaking barriers. What about the fact that the girl turned him down? He goes, you, that's an ugly bag. He insulted her fucking bag, her handbag. He's like, hey, will you, uh, will you finger my asshole? No. Nice shoes, cow. <laughs> yeah. You get sassy. <laughs> you call that but evening wear, you stupid bitch. I just went to a, a shell for a second when you said that, thinking now, like, does O'Reilly know something I don't? Like, with my asshole cleanliness thing, oh, I'm like, no. should I be loofing in my ass? Oh, no, sweet little cowboy, no. No. It'd be like sanding it, right, on the inside. It'd be smooth. Yeah, like a luge. I'll do it, and then I'll have Christine blow in it. <laughs> get all the dust out. Like a whittle? Yeah. I could live like that. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Fellas, it's still light out. Come on. Listen, it's Big J, which means it's butthole talk. It's guaranteed. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's a sign that says Weston across the street. Get a hold of yourself, Jay. <laughs> well, the people that started the Weston Hotel, they don't want to hear this shit. I don't want them to walk by and have to hear my no. nonsense. I was going to stay at this Weston, and then I heard a man talk about his <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I'll be at the Hilton. <laughs> Send my mail. <laughs> Forward, my man. Did that gentleman say uh, Lufa is asshole? We we're gonna bring up the Aaron Hernandez, but I already fucking blew my load on that one. Making fun of my shitty segues. Were you choking yourself while you blew that load? <laughs> he didn't do that. Nice. You don't know that. You have no idea. He wrote a. Uh, now it's coming out that he was bisexual did and he, he had a boyfriend in jail. You did know he, about that? No. That, yeah, I do. But that could be bisexual by what you, he's there for life. Yeah. So I'm not he, saying I'm not saying if I went to jail for life if I went to jail for life I'd kill myself. But before I kill myself Okay. Way to breeze over the darkness. No. He goes, I go to jail, I'm ending it. Death by cop. Yeah. I know what's up. For life? Oh my god. I'd kill myself, but uh, before I do that I'd be like, maybe I can get a few years out of it if I'm into uh fucking dudes. But but I'm not. Like I would well, say you're I'm not he but got into it, yeah. You never he probably know. got into it. I don't yeah. think he was fucking dudes when he was on the Patriots. Yeah. No. No, I think. Do you think he went into jail and he's like, "I'm gonna try some dick"? <laughs> what do you gotta lose maybe at that was, point? Maybe he wanted to kill himself to upstage the Patriots taking that picture with Trump. <laughs> oh, what a spiteful asshole! Uh, or maybe he was jerking off and choking himself to that picture. Yeah, he's like, "I didn't get a Super Bowl ring, but goes, oh, that grass looks so manicured. <laughs> Just to walk on that grass, Mr. the smell. The honestly, thing. Oh my God, you guys are making it sad now. Oh, I don't yeah. know why I'm sad for a guy that went like 11 drive-bys in his fucking rookie year. I don't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the poor guy. Too soon. Aaron Hernandez, uh, 11, 11 drive-bys, rookie year. I wore my Michael Vick jersey. Yeah, didn't, didn't his brother like so, constantly get in trouble? <laughs> Marcus Vick. Marcus Vick got in like tons of trouble always, right? Yeah, he stepped on a dude's like, he, he was just, he would get into fights and shit. I thought he, didn't he like, kill somebody? I mean, I think you made that up. Really? Should we start spreading that as a bond? I thought he was guy? being I thought he was being a good brother. I mean, like Michael Vick would get in trouble for dogs and then he would kill a human to make his brother look better. And he go, hey Michael. <laughs> yeah, he goes He's put some money on my books. <laughs> we'll see in seven years. Why were you wearing a Michael Vick jersey the other day? To be provocative? <laughs> no. No, it's Jay likes to prod Eagles. the people. It's one of my Eagles jerseys. That I got a bunch of Eagles jerseys, one of my Whoa. Eagles jerseys. You know like you're wearing a New York Knicks shirt. You yeah. represent your teams. That's different. <laughs> How so? 
is New York. You can't oh. say that. No, no, no. New Yorkers get away with saying that way too much. That's just your solution. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> New York. That's it. You just committed to that? Just go, oh, you're right. Okay. Wait, let's argue. Philly. Oh, come on. Come on. Let's do it. Come on. We don't even debate. Let's go back to Frank Rizzo. You understand? We're New York. We're not getting an argument in fucking Philadelphia. We're going to get down in the mud. That's what I love being Chicago. Cool. We're Second City. We don't even think about you. I know Austin's like, this where are what, we? Relax. What do you think about Dan's fucking teams then? And Steve, what? The fucking Broncos? I'm, the 49ers? Yes. 49ers. How does he get to like the 49ers if he's from Denver? Because I lived in San Francisco as a small child. Because his dad was down there wearing no underwear and corduroy cutoff shorts. That's true. My dad went to commando. My dad used to wear no underwear and corduroy shorts. <laughs> so it was Dan, a big look in the 70s. Uh, I, I, once the got, I once got the cops came to get. Now, you, I don't you take this story and run with it. I was wearing cut-off shorts and <laughs> cut-off jeans with no underwear. And apparently, I know this is... I didn't even fucking, I'm not even fucking telling you. No, that. fuck that shit. You can't start a Colin Quinn story. With were, you, were, were, you the, were you the maintenance was, guy at a hostel? I, I was yeah. playing football in <laughs> Long Island, and apparently there were some kids watching from the woods. Anyway, I guess my conch was out in the shorts. And uh, From under, like, so you know, under the shorts? I'm with my friend... No, like I'm wearing no underwear with the shorts. I don't know. And um, what kind of sexy ass football are you playing? It was cut off jeans. If my and, cock came out of my shorts, I would not do and comedy. A bit, and a bit. No, no, these were short. Believe me, I'm not trying to. You're Daisy Dukes playing fucking basic football. Daisy Dukes and a bad coat t-shirt. Yeah. And next thing you know, it's a knock on the door. The fucking cops came over. They would accuse me of being a child molester, but they didn't. Oh, Jesus. But this is back in the 70s, so nobody would say that. I go, you know? Sarah, your cock's out while you're playing football. They said, Are you a child a, molester? They had a complaint. What a great child molestery thing to do, though. It's like, I'm going to go be a quarterback coach for these young kids. And then no, you they weren't playing. Shorts. They weren't playing with us. They were fucking in a goddamn treehouse. I don't know where the you fuck go, they were. You go, hey, uh, hey, I'm hey, Chris, saying. you know how good that three-step drought makes me feel? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I knew there was no flea flicker. Flea flicker. I knew, flicker. <laughs> I knew no good would come out of it. Who wants to go long? <laughs> Omaha. Omaha. Oh, oh. oh, sorry there, boy. Sorry. Looks like a zig machine is that. How are we ever going to change the subject from this? <laughs> we don't oh. have to change the subject because we know you have a you have to get out of here. You have a hard out. So yeah, we That's love you. Told, yeah. Colin Quinn, thank you so much for That's hanging out. Colin thank Quinn you. coming by the live bonfire. We'll be right back. It's the Bonfire on Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Yeah. And the exit. And he's gone. Oh, shit's going to get real weird from here on out. We're going to have Jacob and Lou fight to the death. And now, back to the Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder, live from the Moon Tower Comedy Festival in Austin, Texas. Oh. Look at Bar, he's going nuts. She's lubing her lips up. Her lips like LL Cool J. Oh, Ambrosia's here? I didn't know Ambrosia was here. Bring him out. Bring him out. Mama Bear's ready. I'm getting backstage like it's 74. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bonfire on Comedy Central Radio Sirius XM 95, live from the Moon Tower Comedy Festival. Lou, you let that play. We are at Antones. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson. And you are all the live audience listening to it. That's Ambrosia. <laughs> Real professional, bro. I've been eating a lot here uh, with the Cisco's. Shout out to Cisco's and uh, East Fifth Street. Yes. Then I went to Voodoo Donuts. And I made me sick. I watched Christine drunkenly eat a chip witch on a bed yesterday. <laughs> it looks like, oh my God. I'm this like, is a real drunken eating city. I mean, I was drunk, but I, I, I had a grip on myself. I don't know if you did. Yeah, I did. I watched you eat just house tacos yesterday. Ooh, I did house tacos. Pretty drunk, too. Ah. <laughs> ah. I like pointing fingers, man. I don't like pointing the back at me. <laughs> Colin Quinn, one more time for him, everybody. Stopping by the show. Oh. You said you went to Voodoo Donut. We were making fun of, like, why I don't like those kind of donut places. It's really yeah, just like... Hey, just make good donuts. Jelly-filled, glazed, chocolate. Why can't we just do that? Everyone's here. The, the flavor's like mashed potatoes and shoelace. 
This one's gonna taste like lemon pledge. (laughs) Unnecessary. (laughs) Like, yeah, like sausage and eggs fucking, that sounds terrible. Do you want night terrors and cinnamon? (laughs) (laughs) Anxiety jelly filled? How about GED with glaze? But apparently in the night they'll give you a fucking bucket of them if you roll in there late night. Watch out. And it's just like, you had them? Uh, I had one this morning. What'd you think? (laughs) Weren't impressed. Made me sick. Really? I don't, what kind did you get? With something with Captain Crunch. Like Epicat and <laughs> peanut butter. <laughs> Restraining order and <in> raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> Broken dreams and promises. This the is, donut. This is pretty much breaks down what our friendship is, is us just getting high and doing that kind of shit. And uh, the, re- the reason I brought up Colin Quinn originally is because he is oh, the yeah. king of... If you have Netflix, go watch all of his specials. Uh, New York Story... Long story short, and of course, unconstitutional. But uh, the king of the one-man show, he's fantastic at it. So talented. Seriously, no bullshit, the king. But now, that, now he does amazing. He does one-man it good. Shows. He really does it well. But me well, and Dan got like hammered one day. Just not hammered, but like, huh. stoned. Really stoned. Have and you ever been to a shitty one-man show? <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> Because they're like kind of hacky funny and it carries the audience and then they get really serious out of nowhere and it just gets fucking weird. So we spent 45 minutes one day in my apartment just doing, we called them one man show, first line to second line transitions. Where it's where it's, you're almost, the audience around? you're acting something out and then, and so. The, they do stuff where they're like, all right, whatever, I'll buy you a beer when you get back from the army. The United no. States invaded Iraq in 2004. <laughs> Chris was killed two weeks later. We got to buy him that beer? <laughs> yeah. And then they, We're like, nice haircut, dude. Kill yourself. You should kill yourself with that haircut. You never think you're going to get to pick the last word you say to a friend? <laughs> this is how morbid our friendship is. <laughs> this is just a whole afternoon before a bonfire one time. He goes, no. No, Nathan, don't. Don't play with that. Nathan would have been 13 years old this year. You know you can't beat me in a chugging contest. Drunk drivers. 35,000 people a year. This could just keep going. We could do this for a goddamn hour. The Army one's my favorite, though. Hey, when you get back, man, first Asian hand job's on me, right, you piece of shit? Get home safe. The 82nd Infantry was going into Fallujah <laughs> when they were flanked from the east and west. <sighs> they yeah. were, they were, you, you learned how to fight on one front, but no one ever saw them coming from the north. <laughs> yeah, like I'd never let you marry my sister. He died in Afghanistan two years ago. <laughs> but he died engaged to her. I guess they have to smoke pot with us, but... That said, I could do that for a half hour. <laughs> Well, is, we are, by the way, it's what our friendship is based off of because we'd see each other like at like, auditions or something and as soon as we see, before we say we hi to each we other. We got in trouble multiple times before we even did this podcast, which the podcast became the radio show because we would see each other and just fuck around and one time a lady yelled at us and casting agents are pretty yeah. mean. She goes, I'm doing auditions in here and me and Dan, so I saw him, I was like, Dan Soder, mm-hmm. and Dan just goes, mm-hmm. And we, mm, mm, and we start making songs out of it. And that was a real thing that happened. Two men in their 30s, and a woman walks out of the room and she has to go, guys, I'm like doing auditions here. Like, oh, uh, uh. And then she closed the door and we went, mm, fuck her. Mm. She did that bitchy lady where she's like, okay, all right. Okay, we're all adults here. We can, yes, thank you. I'm so excited for the things we have on this show for this oh, Mark Face is saying it's not our special guest isn't here yet. Well, I'm not, all right. Well, what a bush league ass thing we trying to run here, Merc Face. Stretch it out. Well, I'll talk for the next three hours. This Christine. Christine's in her Western attire, looking fine. What the fuck are you getting so close to Merc Face for? 
still drunk. Glass in her in, huh? Right, drunk Christine, soggy Christine, as Fenoya calls it. Soggy Christine. Was she yeah, she was hammered last night. I, I, I don't miss. I don't miss drinking. Sometimes I do. Yeah, I miss it. I have a problem. Not in the, no, not the I next morning. I got so drunk. I got so drunk in Austin during South by Southwest in 2012. I missed my flight, and then I just had to stay out drinking all day. We didn't have to. Well, that's the weirdest way to put it. Well, I can't get a ride home now, so I guess I'll just do blow till the sun comes up. Is that not? Because that's how it works. Someone gave me like a, a blow guy. I don't a, know. Is that how it works? Someone gave me a forty milligram Adderall at like two p.m. and I was like, "Well, I'm pushing it to six a.m." What's Adderall do to you? Fucking makes me unbearable to be around. <laughs> I've never taken. Oh, you've you never know, taken it? I'm lying. I did once. Uh, a friend of mine, a girl. We used to date uh, Rick Shapiro. Yeah. You know who Rick Shapiro is comedian. He's a very funny guy, but she was his ex-girlfriend. I stayed at her house out in L.A., and she literally fed me Adderall and kept How me... F- and she was goes, isn't this fun? I was like, I think. And then, like... <laughs> he kept Did she do the thing where she opens your jaw like a dog and puts it in your mouth and rubs your throat? She put it, yeah, she put it in a piece of meat. She goes, Jake. She put it in a ball with peanut butter in it, and I'm just nosing it around the ground. <laughs> Uh, 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 just jacked on Adderall. Uh, uh. No, she kept me awake for three days, telling me stories of Rick Shapiro, like that I didn't want to hear. She's like, he's just a genius, and he's just so such a tortured genius. And I was like, right? You want to get bagels or jog or something? Why does my heart feel like it's gonna come out of my fingertips? You didn't like it? No, man, I don't like uppers. I'm gonna do yeah. mushrooms tonight, but I like those aren't uppers. Surprise. <laughs> So if I lick your face, don't make it weird. Or if I'm just standing there breathing heavy through my nose as you talk to me. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, man, we're all trees. So. Are, your eye, are your eyes different colors? Mm-hmm. I did. I took mushrooms before I saw Star Wars Episode Two in theaters. And this guy that I went to high school with saw me, and he goes, Dan Soder. He was just standing in the aisle, and I was just staring up at him breathing through my nose. And he was like, how you doing? I was like, I'm excited to see Star Wars. And he goes, all right, I'm at CSU, but how are you? I'm like, mm, as I live and breathe. Good. And then a year later, they were like, yeah, Jesse said you were being a dick. And I was like, oh, I can see that. I said, my, my jaw was like clenched. I was like, mm-hmm. why do you want to take mushrooms if you could do that? I took, that was when I took too many. You know my dosage now, bro. I'm 33. What's, your, what's the measurement of mushrooms? Two caps, two stems. <laughs> That's your prescribed dose? Any more than that, you're going in the deep end. Really? Yeah, I just like to get giggly. The first time I took them, I, uh, we took like an eighth? Yeah. You can do, I, do like, I like to do like two and a half to three grams. It's a little under an eighth. See, anytime. This is my problem with drugs. I don't understand what grams means at all. So people say that all the time. They go, oh, for 40 bucks, you can get weed. You know, you can get like like three grams of weed. I go, oh, my God, can I even carry that? Or does it fit into a thimble? I don't know what that means. The guy goes, uh, it's bad. They say things where I know it's weight and stuff like that, but I just don't. I'm bad at that thing. When he goes, if someone goes, oh, an ounce of weed is like, you know, 300 bucks or something, I'm like, and you start thinking about ounces like, like this is 12 ounces. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> this not... much weed for 300 bucks? But it's what weird. a ripoff. Yeah. The only time I've seen a drug dealer bad with it was when I lived in Alaska and I was trying to get an eighth of weed. And I went to this guy's house who grew it. And I was like, hey, can I get an eighth? And he goes, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Was he gutting a fish while he was saying that? No, but it was in the middle of the woods. It was in deep in the woods. And I go, Mick, yeah. and I go hey, hey, Mick Talk, my name's Dan. Yeah. I was told to come see you about getting some weed. Who are you? <laughs> Bring me my batteries. I want batteries. You can smoke in the house here at Sovereign Nation. <laughs> yeah. But I asked him, I go, can I, get, can I get an eighth? It's three and a half grams. And he goes, oh, you just want to 
40? You want a 40 bag? And then he gave me five grams for $40. And I was like, I don't think you're a good drug dealer. I just told you the price I was willing to pay, and you went more for less. You're like, I don't know, like a buck a gram? Is that bad? Is that great? Is that terrible? <laughs> Can I get an ounce for what? 28 bucks? Ready? Still, when he's still, what is happening with this special guest? Dude, I'll tell you this right now. Merkface has a little beef with me because I told you all he got drunk. And he's giving me sass. Is he pissed giving you sass? You're giving me sass. That was a little sassy. All right. I will admit that. Are you upset that everyone knows you were drunk? No, not at all. It'll everyone happen. knew you were life. drunk. Do you think you were nailing it? No. <laughs> like, have... well, if you didn't point it out, nobody would have known. <laughs> I have made a few apologies today. Did you really? Uh-huh. Who? Did you have to be like, sorry for know. talking into your eye? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. that was perfect drunk talking. <laughs> I've got a good secret for you. <laughs> You're my favorite. <laughs> Don't tell Jacob. Hey, Jacob, you're my favorite. <laughs> Don't tell Lou. Don't tell Lou. Hey, Lou. Lou was together last night. Lou, you, you held it together. Grab the mic. DJ Lou. All right. All right, Max Hedrum. <laughs> yeah, hey, Stephen Hawking, why don't you go? <laughs> last night was a blast. <laughs> I'm a different person. DJ Lou is not taking requests right now. Oh, Dude, if, what if a oh <laughs> Lou's so cool? What if there was a serious accident where Lou could only speak in those? You're like, this is dark. That guy. He just speaks in fucking samples. Yeah. Drops. <laughs> yeah. Do you need me to change your colostomy bag? Let me clear my throat. <laughs> that means he went. <laughs> the special guest is ready. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is this is very exciting, everybody. And I know, hopefully, we have a lot of Bonfire listeners here in the audience. Yeah, if you don't listen to our show, this is just going to seem fucking weird. <laughs> no, it's going to be pretty exciting no matter what here. We have, uh, if you heard one of our last, uh, my, I think the last Bonfire Live, we had an exclusive interview. With Corey 3. With Corey Feldman's son, Corey 3. That went very, very well. I'll tell you this, did a lot for our publicity department. Started getting a lot of key interview requests into the people. They started responding. And as uh, fans of the show, you guys know, we really made quite a big to-do about uh, a certain guest on a certain talk show. We spent a lot of time with it. We got our budget together, and we found out if we spent most of our yearly budget on this interview, it could go through. So everybody, I want to... Welcome to the stage, a Bonfire exclusive interview with the great, from Dr. Phil, Danielle Brajoli, everybody. Danielle, your pussy's going to come out of the bottom of your shorts. Oh, you have such older man ass. <laughs> Just getting twerked on. Danielle, nice boxer briefs. Um, first off, Danielle, I mean, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I want to thank you. First and foremost, Danielle, your arms are hairy. Greek? Uh, I want to thank you so much for coming here to our live, live bonfire show here in Austin, Texas. Whatever. Y'all pay me 100 k to be here, so what up, hoes? Wait, are you calling us hoes? Yeah, you a hoe. You a ho and y'all hoes. Oh, come on. Boo. Yeah. Don't let yourself be called I don't hoes. Like that. Danielle, it's all, it's all love here. This is the bonfire. We love you. We just wanted to see, you know, what have you been up to? I've been doing great. I took all this money I'm making and I invested in the best stock possible. Well, I mean, I don't mean to interfere here, but I am on a show called Billions. <laughs> which is about the stock market. The man knows money. What stock did you invest in? Myself. Oh! How did you invest in yourself? I went back to school. You went back to school? That's I fantastic. Went back to school. She had a seventh grade education. I did not think that was how it was going to go. Uh, what are you studying exactly? Medicine and shit. Well, that's, a, that's a little vague. What, what kind of medicine exactly? Cytogenetics. 
Oh, that's crazy. Cryogenics? That's nuts. No, you dumb hoe. Cytogenetics. You need to sit your ass down, dude. Cytogenetics you know? is an exciting and dynamic field which studies the which analyzes the number and structure of human animal chromosomes. Changes that affect the number and or structure of the chromosomes can cause problems with growth, development, and how the body functions. What? Danielle, that sounds crazy difficult. Because it is, you stupid bitch. <laughs> I major in cytogenetics, but I'm minor in twerk. Oh, come on. You're only twerk, a child, Danielle. Twerk, Stop twerk, dancing twerk. like that. I can't. She's the aggressor. What do I do? You're 13th, Danielle. Stop it. Oh. Shut up, you stupid, big-headed fuckboy. Oh. Whoa. I like this girl's panache. Whatever. Whatever. You two suck. Those Reddit threads are right, y'all blow. And Christine is a hoe. Oh. Tell that frog voice bitch she can catch me outside. How about that? Oh! She, she, she said the line. She oh. did it. Danielle, what do we expect next from you? Are you going to go on the road? What's, what's, up, what's happening next in the life of Danielle? You can catch me learning cell manipulation and other cancer treating techniques at John Hopkins this fall. <laughs> Then you can catch me at Sloan Kettering doing my dissertation on the positives of stem cell research. And down in Hotlanta, curing at the CDC. Twerk, 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 twerk. You're 13. Oh, legal. Hit them dance moves. Centrifuge, 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 centrifuge. Do the centrifuge, centrifuge, twerk, twerk, centrifuge. <laughs> You're a child! Danielle, I gotta tell you, you are so impressive and still somehow such garbage. <laughs> oh, you hitting on me, big boy? Now you hold it right there! No, we don't, we don't allow reverse child molestation here on the bonfire. You get out of here! You go! There's no reverse child you molestation! You get the hell out of here! You're get done. off our stage! You're out of here! No way, you get Wilco! You get Wilco, you come get here with out. the manipulation. Danielle Brajoli, everybody! I did not expect at all her to be so hairy in the arms. I'm not going to lie to you. Those she legs. Was so though. hairy. You had these. Anybody want uh, hoop earrings? Those are Christine's, I think. Are they really? Are these really Christine's? It's Christine. Oh, all right. Where the hell's Christine? Is she sucking off a cowboy? Is that where right her head goes? She cannot wait on my stage. Christine, are these yours? Oh, then toss them like fucking. Yeah, get them out there. Throw them in the audience. Why? The guy just wants earrings. I just want hoop earrings, bro. Toss them to the audience, bro. Put the clips on it. You'll wear them? All right. These are yours, then. Here. Come on down! You got a pair of used earrings! These earrings from Cage Oars are going to turn your ears green within the next 35 minutes. You might get an ear infection. What's your name? Adele. One more time for Adele, everybody. Rocking some serious cleavage. Yeah, that was a lot of cle and a kimono. A kimono cleavage? So hipster. She lives next to a crack den. She's like, you know what confuses crackheads? Eastern culture with big titties. Um, very excited for this. This is fucking awesome. If you're a fan of our show, we um, people have been asking us for to do s something with this for yeah a couple months now. It was something that just happened on the show. And something we discussed expanding on and making uh, maybe a bigger part of the show or its own segment on the show. So we wanted to give you guys a little Comic-Con treatment and do a special exclusive audio clip. And Play fucking enjoy. Coming soon to the bonfire, an exclusive radio event the world has been waiting for. Good evening, and this evening's top news, Chicago is in pure chaos. Don't rob me. I'm so sleepy, and I ain't got no money. Shut up. Give me your money. And that butthole. <laughs> Chicago's going straight to hell, and there ain't nobody doing shit about it. A place with no hope until two unlikely heroes rise from the ashes. I don't know how you were raised, but around here, we believe in a thing called understanding, respect, and boundaries. Two men fight back. You can't kill me.
kill me. I have a hostage. Please help me. He's gonna kill me. If you do shoot, you'll kill her. You have nowhere to go, pig. Phil, look at this guy. He's all, uh, if you do shoot, you're gonna kill what? You think we'd come here with no backup plan? I know to have a backup plan. My dad came home from 23 hours of work, and he'd come home for that one hour a day, and it was fight or fuck. And you didn't want to be on the ass end of that drunken mistake. My partner has a point, but you're right, criminal. We can't shoot you. But I never said nothing about shooting. What's that? Oh, that's our third partner, Maggie. I think she wants to meet you. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Hey, lady, you know, it's the job, so it's what we do. This spring, two cops take back the Windy City. The kilos are on their way, and soon we will have control of the entire city of Chicago's flow of heroin. Hold it right there. You're really gonna get caught with two kilos of pure heroin and then act like I'm the jerk-off for arresting you? What do you turtleneck peckers think you're doing in my city? Oh, <laughs> you befuddled guinea. I have you surrounded. This isn't anything that some good old fashion psychology can't get us out of. And by psychology, I mean dynamite. Hey, what are you guys doing? You're the best detectives we have, but I can't explain to the brass above why there's two city blocks completely destroyed. I mean, you're doing good work, but damn, you're making my life miserable. And it was bad to begin with. I wouldn't put you in a tough place like this, but me and McGraw are out there in the streets with the brooms, and we're driving the trash trucks. We're cleaning up this dump. Yeah, tell that to the mayor. These cops are doing so much damage. Uh-huh, yeah. Breaking it and smashing it. I'm not sure if it's good or bad for my re-election. Yeah, they're making me mad all the way to the very tippy top. When these two go to work, things get shaken up. <laughs> we need to find out where all these missing girls are going. Oh, hey, I know a guy. A real dirtbag. I'm in the back. 8 p.m. Delivery. Docks. Big truck. Black Barbie. Couple of bims. Dogs there. Glazer, we need names. Places. What are their relationships like with their dads? Real information. Calm down, McGraw. You're gonna freak the guy out. Crime should lube up and split it. You guys are a couple of cops who live on the edge and play by their own rules? Why would you do that? You guys sound like a couple of Chicago dicks. Chicago dicks. Coming soon. Yeah! yeah. Chicago it's, dicks it's, coming it's, soon on the bonfire. It's gonna happen. Clap it up for Jacob making that trailer, everybody. Now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder, live from the Moon Tower Comedy Festival in Austin, Texas. Please welcome our very good friends from Comedy Central's After Jam, The Midnight Snack, Avery Pearson, Josh Adam Myers, and Jeremiah Watkins come to the stage, everybody. Give it up for them. Yeah. Thank you. Hell yeah, boys. Oh, we're going to have a little fun here. So, if you've Hell seen yeah. uh, Big J's What's Your Fucking Deal Season 2 on CISO... Which they all have. Um, you got seltzer? But he's drinking it like it's something awesome. Slow and low, guys. Give it up for the nation's uh, top biker comic. And if Silence of the Lambs ever becomes a musical, we, we found the voice of oh. Buffalo Motherfucking Bill. Was she a great big fat person? <laughs> really? You went there right away? Yeah. Are you about a size 13? <laughs> He's like can, a, can you help me put this in my van? <laughs> He's like if, if, Bu if Buffalo Bill was doing a lotion ad. He's like, it puts the lotion on his skin. Neutrogena. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can do that. Hi. Is your daughter missing? <laughs> She's probably in a well. <laughs> Would you fuck me? I fuck me so hard. Who fucked so hard? Would you fuck me? I fuck me so hard. Sing it! Would you fuck me? 
I fucked fuck me so hard. Are you a fat girl with combination skin? I fucked me so hard. Everybody say! Would you fuck me? I fucked me so hard. Would you fuck me? I fucked me so hard. Bring it down. This is the worst musical version of Silence of the Lambs that has ever existed. It would only be worse if this was dinner feed or two. Let me take a look at some of these motherfuckers out here. <laughs> Please stand up, sir. I always wanted to know what an ice trucker looked like. Show the people in the back. If you're looking for amphetamines, he got them. This guy proves that every girl's crazy about a sharp-dressed man. <laughs> Why would a guy that big have a quarterback number on? That's not a quarterback, that's a kicker. <laughs> He's wearing a Morton Anderson jersey. You're the one motherfucker. Gary Anderson, no one fucking knew the difference. So don't try to correct me, you probably got it on sale. <laughs> on sale now, we have our Gary Anderson. Extra point kick special. What if Gary Anderson is part of the Aryan Brotherhood? And that's the reason that you bought it. Because you probably did jail time. I think I saw you on lockup. <laughs> on MSNBC Is that right? Have you been to prison, sir? Twice <laughs> <laughs> Call him like I see him And the prison sentences on your face What, uh, sent you to jail? Why did you think it's so serious? <laughs> yeah, we gotta keep playing the music it's... I think we're all confused that a guy goes to jail twice and attends comedy shows <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find a way to make it laugh <laughs> Come on stage, let's get you on stage. I get you to the front. He almost fell on his butt now. He almost fell on his butt now. That was so aggressive. <laughs> he came up quick. You got it, don't got it. Well, yeah, I'm going over. <laughs> That's like when a dog you don't know moves too quick at you. Like, Try <laughs> yeah, What do I do? Come up, come, don't come up. I've never seen somebody dress like four different sports. Golf, football, <laughs> skateboarding, and cross country. Great riff. <laughs> That's a really good riff. Great riff. Great riff. Uh, he's like, riff. I'm sponsored by all the teams. <laughs> Josh, can I try to sing one too? Please, go ahead, of course. Uh -huh. Dude, when you were in prison, by any chance did you hang yourself while you jerked off? <laughs> Hide yourself when you jerk down. Auto rotting asphyxiation. Auto rotting asphyxiation. Auto rotting asphyxiation. Auto rotting asphyxiation. It's auto errata. You call it auto errata. That was Dan actually. Dan was saying auto errata. Not one time did you say errata. Yeah. Auto errata. He's like AutoZone asphyxiation. <laughs> That's when you go to AutoZone and get too much knowledge. Yeah. Auto, auto mechanic asphyxiation. Auto mechanic asphyxiation. Auto Arado sounds like a very famous salsa singer. Auto <laughs> What's your it name? It sounds like a way? transformer that's always masturbating. Auto Erato. <laughs> auto. A symbol. <laughs> I gotta run in the back. Put on the auto Erato. <laughs> Alright. Bring the mic up because you've been saying words. Are you made of metal? Because that was my second stimulation. Yes. He turned me into the perfect metal weapon. Play. He's a T3000, watch out! I made it entirely of metal. What drugs are the drugs that took you to jail? Methamphetamine. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. I also like how he said methamphetamine, like, like, like many of meds, you know? <laughs> 
Yeah. I think there's one question every person in here wants to know. Oxycontin. No. <laughs> What are you pushing now? What are you holding? Are you holding? I was actually gonna ask if you were in prison and you ever had your shit pushed in. No, maybe. <laughs> that wasn't a very clear answer. <laughs> Me and Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> I still can't tell if he got fucked in jail or not. <laughs> Is he speaking like a bridge troll with the riddles, whether or not? Yeah. <laughs> That's Do you get fucked in the ass? As I'm not the, used to being up tips. here. <laughs> I guess you can't talk about it. Well, actually, you can if we make it into a very nice romantic song. Oh, okay. Or you do a one-man show segment where you go, you know, he always had the brightest smile on the block. Prison will change it. Oh, I remember how tight his butt was when he was younger. Why is your butt going? Two stints in prison does things to a man's asshole. Stretch you. You gotta have your shit pushed in sometimes for cigarettes. <laughs> and <Doritos>. commissary. <laughs> The commissary. Ramen. 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 How do you? Nothing will get you fucked in prison like ramen. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you got one of those flavor packs? Get in the back. <laughs> chocodiles? Oh, I will let you fuck me for chocodiles. <laughs> Who's put money on your books? <laughs> Please tell us about your first romantic sexual experience in prison. His name was Chuck. It was a slow ride. <laughs> You said it. You said it. You, you, there's nothing much more you have to say. You did, you, his name was Chuck. It was a slow night. <laughs> yeah, he probably didn't tell you much more about him than that. He's like, I'm not good at prison improv. Could I get another suggestion? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a seat? Maybe pick it up my life. Yeah. Pick up the pieces. And what do you do now with your life now that you're on parole? I sell lemonade at festivals in Austin. Warm lemonade. How's that working out for you? <laughs> working out really well. Wait, was what you were saying? Is it because you put oxycodone in the lemonade? <laughs> Those festivals with that, uh, that'd be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know about you, I said a lemonade and I'm feeling yeah. good. I figured, hey guys, I figured out how to like EDM. <laughs> this one, this guy's over here. Meth and age. Yeah, leprechaun's giving out special lemonades. <laughs> DMT and lemonade? I'm in. Do you, ever, do you ever have to compete with like nine year old girls? <laughs> like, like across the street? For what? For lemonade. Lemonade stand. Lemonade stand. I don't know if you know this, but they have the market corner on lemonade stand. <laughs> when you said it, everyone thought you were kidding at first, and then we're like, I think this guy runs a fucking lemonade stand. To throw him off and try to get him to relapse, they go, hey, you want to just bump a line of Oxy before you sell some more? <laughs> is that your girl right there? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Can we get your ass on stage? To the stage is outside, girl. Stand up, come on around, That's sit down girl. next to you. It's all right, this is girl. Outside lady. Bring it up as 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 outside lady. I think she's afraid of making the stage jump. <laughs> well, she doesn't move like a mountain lion. Like a <laughs> <laughs> Fucking prison puma over here. <laughs> How did you meet you this man? Stage to a row. <laughs> How did you meet that man? Selling lemonade. What the fuck? Wait, wait, wait. She, a salesman. she jumped you into the business? <laughs> I was shaky in the alley going like this. 
That's what happens when you sell some lemonade. He's, he's really committing. He's really in character. <laughs> How long y'all been together, girl? Fifteen years. Whoa! She didn't even have the soul left in her marriage to sing it. She's like, 15 years. <laughs> Feels like 10 minutes underwater. This guy's... So good. And that guy's wow. been in prison. Wow. He knows how slow time wow. goes. Two steps. Mr. Romantic Conjugal Visit over here. <laughs> <laughs> You ever get fucked on a bed made of springs? <laughs> <laughs> Let's ask you the real question. What kind of freaky shit is he into in bed? You mean he fucks from the button, calls her Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> or he has to sleep on the floor like Hanks and Catherine. <laughs> Does he sit down when he pees? <laughs> No. <laughs> You're not a real couple then. <laughs> if you don't know those piss techniques, you don't know that <laughs> right? So tell me about the sexual shit that he's into. What is he like? Low jobs. <laughs> Serious low. She said that so creepy. Serious <laughs> low jobs. <laughs> she turned into like a Native American chief, like blow jobs. <laughs> low <laughs> blow jobs. Blow I get a flow job. Hey, Dan, you do an For the voice. squaw takes the saliva <laughs> and puts it on her chief's collar. <laughs> under, under the moonlight. <laughs> Where the eagle flies. In my village, the, the shrill makes eye contact with the snake. <laughs> the shrill scream of a man awakens the baby in the other village. No! <laughs> 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 That is completion where I come from. Remember how Prince used to hide behind the fucking amps? <laughs> That's you right now, for sure. Like what do you think? A, what do you think a household built on lemonade money is? A house built on love, Jen. Uh, uh, <laughs> Pulp of love. Meth, the house built on methanade. Besides blowjobs, what else is he into? Just blow jobs, I guess. Just blow jobs. I like him. He's, He's got one speed. She's <laughs> like, can I do something now? He's like, just blow me and shut up. <laughs> How long ago were you in jail? I've never been in jail. Oh, you've never been in jail? <laughs> If he was sitting, Dan, I would have thrown his chair out of Wilco. So, you get out liars stage. don't get to go on. You get out of our stage, liars. <laughs> liars don't get to sit down on our stage. You totally broke my heart. I'm letting you know that. I think we're all a little. You're lucky. I'm still impressed with your agility to get on the stage. <laughs> There's only I'm one thing. out of this goddamn venue right now. <laughs> we, we, we move like a cat. We find out he his true identity is he's Batman who lives under Batbridge in Austin. <laughs> yes, he's Austin. Batbridge. Austin Batbridge, Batman. <laughs> There's only one thing you can do to make up for lying to us. No. No. Give somebody a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> Pay it forward. Pay it forward. Your poor wife, she's been doing it for 15 years. You signed the release, dude. Look at the fine print. You gotta suck a dude off now. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the bonfire. Yeah, well, you, the bonfire. you don't leave without sucking a dick. Yeah. <laughs> you don't lie to us. Liars take yeah. in the chops. <laughs> Or you could just pull your dick out in front of all these people. Oh, he's good. Yeah, but no. Please pull your dick yeah. out tonight, sir. Please pull your dick 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 out tonight, sir. I want to see your ZZ Top Cock flowing in. The wind. Billy Gibbons ain't got shit on your motherfucking cock and balls. Oh, you 
motherfucking dick out. out. So she lied about Pull being in prison. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see this man's penis. <laughs> Keep Austin weird. <laughs> It's so probably not going to happen, but it is funny when two people take it seriously enough they're like, I'm not going to clap. <laughs> I don't. He wanted us to know he does not want to see this man. I'm not having it. I couldn't get tickets to Hamilton and now this. <laughs> the good news is our friend over there has been painting your dick the entire oh. night. So. Yeah, it's like Titanic, but dicks. It's going to be your dick on a skateboard spinning a basketball, like a caricature. <laughs> We'll just sit here with quiet until he pulls the trigger. <laughs> so I guess balls in your court, bro. Everybody, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, my friend. Fantastic. Let's see if you're spry getting off the stage. Stage at Namari. Oh, After you, buddy. I mean, you're yeah, all oh, oh, everybody, Josh Adamaya, Jeremiah Watkins, and Avery Pearson. Yeah, the after jam, they're not going anywhere, everybody. We uh, are at the final moments here of our show. We want to do something fun. You know, we like to mix it up. Sometimes you try to get a guy to pull his dick out. Sometimes you get lied to about prison terms. Sometimes we hire a man to paint a dick. But is that how are you doing over there? By the way, keep it going. Keep it going for Chris, everybody. Fan of the show, asked if he could come to a live painting. Wow. The show. You know what's super upsetting about this? I just realized the whole time he's been painting, he's not, I thought maybe he's being inspired by the show. He just has on headphones listening to something else. Did you notice it? He just took off headphones. You listen to us? An old show, yeah. one that worked. <laughs> yeah. This show worked great, you fuck face. I'm kidding. Now it's just a little bit of cowboy here. Did you guys have fun tonight? Yeah. Seven o'clock, bro. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Thank you, guys. You got a belly full of fucking barbecue. Uh, we're not going to leave you empty-handed, though. No, uh, you know, we like to get a good dance party going. And this is going to be a slow dance party, so Christine's going to walk through the audience, try to hype you guys up. Josh is going to run through the audience. We want everyone out of your fucking chairs, and we're going to sing this last song together. We like to do a little musical number at the end. You know how we do. And this is out of all of our ranges of singing. <laughs> So we're going to need everyone's help, especially a lot with the chorus and every other part also. <laughs> Christine, you're really going to pound water to loop up your pipes like that was going to be the problem? Yes, Jay, let me get in the right head. She goes, hang on, I'll be that. Red leather, yellow leather. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to need all of our fucking friends to come up here from the bonfire. Merc face, Lou's going to come up, Jacob. Christine, everybody, let's fucking do this. Everybody out of your fucking chairs. Everybody out. Slow dance party. Oh, before we do this, yes, I do want to keep playing, fellas. It is the Comedy Jam Band from Comedy Central playing with us. It's a big fucking band. L.M.N.O.P., everybody. L.M.N.O.P. in the house. Nick, Joe, Avery, Josh, Jeremiah. Gonna take a little time Little time to think things over He's singing right to you, Dan. Good, bud. Gotta read between the lines No one's slow dancing In case I need it when I'm older Mountain I must climb Feels like the world upon my shoulders I got you all through the clouds I see love shine It keeps me warm as life grows colder going, Lou. I want to know what love is. We can be louder than that. I want you to show me. I want to feel what love is. Yeah, man. Sing it. I want you to show me. The Met 
Maddox got a good voice. Oh. Did you lose the words? I gotta take a little time. Upstairs. Come on. I want to feel what love is. Sing like you're drinking Oxycontin lemonade. I want you to show me. Have you ever had your shit pushed me? I want to know what love is. 